Hi there. In this demonstration, I want to show you how to achieve two things when it comes to including graphics in R. The first one is to use the computer modern font, which is the default font used by LaTeX. And then secondly, also, how do you draw nice histograms that overlap and you actually want to show the difference between them. So we're just going to demonstrate this in one sitting. Now, if you want to use a computer modern font, it is important that you actually have downloaded the computer modern font and installed it on your computer. Now, fonts come in what is called true type font files. And if you just search for computer modern download, it will likely give you an option for Mac or Windows. Let's just search let's say for Windows. Well, although I'm using, kind of working on a Mac, I found two kind of good enough websites. The first one is Font Squirrel, and then there's a thousand and one fonts. So if you have a look at one of those links, you can download the TTF file and install it on your computer, and it gives you access to all of the variants of the computer modern modern font. The one that we're after is the serif Roman. Uh, font that's the one that is typically used by default in a LaTeX document. So make sure that you've installed the computer modern font uh, on your machine. If you're having troubles, just Google it. Right in R, let's just create an R script file for ourselves. And I'm going to save my file as quite, quite lengthy, but it should do the trick. Let me just increase the font size over here. All right, I always start by cleaning my workspace. And then the important thing, and I never know exactly which of these libraries or calls are always necessary, but I've just learned them through Google. So I'm going to give them all to you here. First one is calling the library extra font. Then font install. At some point you will get a warning about some of these calls, um, but it still does the trick. All right. <clears throat> now, assume that we have a value x, and I'm just going to ge generate a whole bunch of these. Um, And this might actually not even be necessary for the first demonstration. Let's just generate random normal values. And let's say I want to generate uh, a thousand with mean 25 and a standard deviation of three. And then for my second value, I want to generate a random normal value, also a thousand values. But here I want the mean to be 30 and also standard deviation of 3. Right, then let's just generate those values. If I were to now draw a histogram of y1, and let's say I wanted to have 20 breaks, I will get a diagram that kind of looks like a decent um, normal distribution. But what if I want to compare y1, which is a mean round about 25, with one where the mean is around about 30. And I want to have them on the same graph. And if I even kind of like that, I want to show what distributions I actually fitted on them. All right, so let's take this in steps. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create a histogram object for myself, of which x is y1, and let's say I want my breaks to be the sequence, it looks like it's about every one value, 
So let's say we want to make this just for safety sake from 10 to 40 in steps of one. Then that is the distribution that I will actually um, see. Now, what I want uh, at this point, I do not want to plot it, so I give the argument plot equals false. So now if I create the, um, the histogram, it assigns all of the values to H1. And you can see that it actually is made up out of breaks, counts, density, mids, and a whole bunch of other uh, attributes. So that is actually what I'm after. Now, two things. All right, let's switch that part off for now. And let's just focus on the fonts. Now, this only works if you generate PDF uh, images. So the first step that we actually have to do is say PDF file is put it in, oops, put it in my graphics folder. And I'm going to call demonstrate computer modern histograms.pdf. Let's say the height is five and the width is seven. Then I will call some graphic parameters. These are just things that I like to, to actually set. Um, you can use different ones. And the important one here is that we call family is let me just get my values right here cm roman and then finally we have dev dot off now typically if you just wanted a serif font over here that would have done the trick. So if I were to call this whole script, here you see some of these warnings that they are already installed. I'm just going to ignore those warnings. Suffice to say that when I open up my graphics file, oops, I'm in the wrong place. I have a PDF file that is now in a serif font as opposed to a sans serif font um, like the one that we actually see here in the plot function. Right. Um, <clears throat> so how do we make sure that that is a computer modern font? So I'm going to say CM Roman. That's one of the steps along with the PDF arguments over here. Yeah, oops. Is we actually bring in give the PDF file another argument called CM Roman, and then the magic at the end is after you've closed your graphic device with a dev dot off call is to actually say embed fonts and now you actually have to say what file is it that you're after go and call your graphics file that's the PDF file that I want and then it has a second argument out file and I'm going to put that in my graphics file as well the difference is I'm just going to give it a suffix called cm to know that that is um, my computer modern font. So if I save this file and I now execute it and I look at my graphics, you will see that I have two, di two different files. This is the normal one and that is the computer modern one. And you will see that there is a slight difference in the two serif fonts that I actually have. 
This one is the default serif, and that is the computer modern um, file. Right, and that's what it takes to get your graphics into a very LaTeX looking document. Now, I want to focus a little bit more in terms of this histogram now. And I'm going to draw this histogram that I have over here as a polygon, which means I need to continuously draw these lines so that I don't have these vertical uprights. Now, if you think about specifying the coordinates of a polygon, you need to give it an X value and you need to give it a Y value. And you'll see that when we draw this type of histogram, I stay at the same X value, but two different Y values. And then I stay at the same Y value, but two different X values. And I continue this stepwise process. So you need to now decide whether you want to work with frequency or whether you want to work with density, because both of them um, are in this H1 object. There you have density, and there you actually have the actual counts, which is your frequency value. So I prefer to work with density, because I'm going to plot the fitted normal distribution on top of it. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to just call this xx1. And I'm going to use um, <clears throat> all of the break values that was provided. But remember now how we actually draw this. We draw it from the first break value and then we go up. So we repeat each of the, our x values twice. And then when we're done drawing our entire um, polygon, we revert back to the first breaks value. So I'm going to focus on these breaks um, at, uh, values that is in the H1 object. Um, and the way in which I do that is I'm going to combine a bunch of different values. The first one is to repeat each one of my H1 breaks, each equals two. And then I'm going to combine that with going back to H1 breaks, the first value. So if I now execute this and I look at my xx1 value, you'll see that I have 10, 10, 11, 11, and right in the end, I have the value 10 again, which takes me back to the initial point. All right, so what is the y values associated with this? Y, y for the first one. Here I'm going to combine a bunch of different values. I start with zero because I'm going to start at the bottom before I go up with whatever the step is. So I'm always starting with zero. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go um, to my density values. But you'll see that I've got one more break than what I have density values, because density tells you the density inside the bar, but there's one more break value, um, depending on where you actually start counting. So now I'm going to repeat each one of my h1 density values, which equals 2. And when I'm done with each one of these density values, I go down to 0 and go back to 0. So I actually have two 0 values over here. And now you will see that I've got xx1, 63 values, and yy1, 63 values. And now I'm actually ready to draw a plot. And typically how I would draw this um, while we're at it, let's just go to H2 and do something similar. It will be the histogram. Use exactly the same values. I'm also not going to plot it.
Right. <clears throat> and now we're ready to actually plot. I am going to not give it any values at this point. So I'm really going to create an empty plot for myself. Um, I guess that my range of values would be, we can change this afterwards, let's say from 15 to 45. And I don't know what the um, Y values would be. We can play with that as well. Be from zero to, let's say, um, one, three, let's make it 0 0.15 for now. I'm not going to draw any axis, and I am not interested in any labels. All right, and this should do the trick. If I run this, I will have an empty empty graphic, which is perfectly fine. First thing that I want to do is I want to now draw the polygons, and for that I call polygon x will first be the first axis and y will be the first y's. Now if I say density, this will be the density of shading lines, but what is important to note here, um, the default value of null means that no shading lines are drawn. And if you say SA, it means you can actually fill this value. So now you need to decide which of these values, uh, which of these polygons do you want at the bottom. So let's make this one in A for now. And we're going to say col uh, the color is, let's make it in. 50% gray. So if we do this, we should end up with a polygon that looks something like that, which is what we wanted. Um, but now we no, don't, no longer have these vertical lines, and we can add the second polygon on top of that. And through experience, I've realized that I think if this is around about 25, that should do the trick. So if we execute this and have a look at our graphic, now you can actually start seeing the two polygons um, both on, on the plot. And if we want the lines a little bit further apart, that will be a number of lines per inch. We actually have a diagram that Kind of gives us an idea of how two histograms compare with one another. And I'm going to leave that there for now and just finish off the, the graph. Um, now I'm drawing a box around the plot and I can start adding my axis. So let's say uh, side is one. And if I'm not mistaken, I think TCL This will allow me to, to draw different lengths of little lines, and indeed it does. It gives me short lines for all the ones and the longer 
lines for, for the rest. And here I can actually see that I can reduce my X limit, um, not all the way to 45, but just to 40. And that should give me a better looking graph. And now I am ready to Let's say the measurements is width and on the side and that kind of it's placed roughly where I want it and on in text And there I actually have a graph that I can use inside uh, my document. One thing is I can make the second side a lot smaller. Let's make that 0 0.5 to get rid of this white space on the side. I can actually make it more. And there I actually have a graph. It seems my Y limit. I can actually increase a little bit to make sure that I don't have missing data that confuses me right and you'll see that the graphic changes every time because my seed is random so it will change every time that I actually execute this but here I actually have a graph or uh, two graphs um, the one makes use of the normal serif font and the other one is slightly different but looks more in line with what a native document would look like using computer model as the serif font of choice good and you've also seen how we generate two overlapping histograms drawing them as polygons and you can now add a legend and toy around until it looks pretty i hope that was useful